Let's talk about the gamut masks and how to use them. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today let's see how Krilla can help us to choose the colors better. As you can see I have finished the line art of this cotton project and the only thing left for me to do is to color it. I would like to create a balanced image that is pleasing to the eye. Now to achieve my goal, I think that uh, complementary colors uh, should do the trick. I could use the color wheel and choose the complementary colors uh, directly from there, <laughs> but uh, it will take a while and I am the kind of person uh, who takes a very long time uh, choosing between uh, tints or shades, uh, so I'll pass. Fortunately, there is a tool in Krita that can help me uh, select the colors I need. It comes in the form of a docker and it is called a gamut mask. A gamut mask, in simple terms, limits the set of colors you want to use and paint with. So let's go get this docker. Go to settings, choose a docker and select a gamut mask. As you can see in the docker, we have a few already created for us. Later in the video, I will show you how to manage the docker and modify the, its uh, preferences. I will also show you how to create, uh, edit and uh, duplicate masks. For now, let's uh, continue. The next thing we need to do is grab another docker called the color selector docker. So let's go get it. Go back to settings and uh, docker. And uh, this time choose uh, artistic uh, color selector. The reason why we need this docker is that the gamut mask is applied to that color selector and not to the regular color wheel. Now, as always, you can dock the dockers wherever you want on your workspace, or you can leave them as they are now, floating around your canvas. It's fine. Remember also that you can resize them as needed. So I want the color of my character to be around purple. So let's choose the color here. Now look what happened to our regular color wheel. The color we chose here shows there as well. This is because both dockers are synchronized. Even better, look at what happens to the background of the color selector when I choose another color in the color wheel. The background changes. So whatever color you choose here, it will always be represented behind the color selector. Now, as I said earlier, I would like to use the complementary colors. First, let me get back to the purple color. Now I'll move to the gamut docker and choose the complementary mask. And voila! The only thing left to do is uh, paint my character using only the colors uh, within the boundaries uh, set by the mask. One last thing, I can use the value scale swatches on the side and decide how closer to white or closer to black I want my colors to be. But here I'll stay in the middle. Now when you are done and if you want to undo the mask, click on the toggle button. Let's have a look on how we can modify the preferences of a docker. To modify the preferences, click on this button. The first slider controls the number of swatches located in the left corner of the color wheel selector. As shown earlier, these are your value scales. The more swatches you add, the smaller they become, so be careful. The second sliders control the numbers of U steps within the color selector. Same thing here, the more you add, the smaller they get. The 
The third slider controls the numbers of saturation rings present in your selector. Before to continue, I would like you to notice that the top rings are highly saturated, while as you move toward the center of the wheel, the rings are less saturated. Now we have two more things to look at. To invert the saturation, click here. And finally click here to reset everything to the default settings. Let's apply the atmospheric uh, triad mask. And uh, let's see now what we can do to this one. You can rotate the filter by using the angle level located here. You can also directly click on any of the three buttons located right beside it. This one will flip the angle horizontally. This one will flip the angle vertically. And this one will flip the angle both horizontally and vertically. Finally, if you want to be more precise, use the input box to type a new value or use the up and down arrows on the side to modify the values of your angle. Now I forgot to mention this button earlier. This button will take you to the Docker's setting. Here you can modify a few more things. Just click on the different options and see what they can do for you. Now personally, I will tell you I leave it while alone. All right, now let's look at the Gamut Mask Docker. To change the display, click on this button. You can decide to see the mask as uh, thumbnails only, or you can decide to see them with a detailed uh, description. If you click on the tag button, you can create and organize your masks. This will be very useful when you want to create a lot of them and when you want to save and reuse them later. Click on the plus sign button to create a new mask. Click on the pen looking button to edit an existing mask. Click here to duplicate the mask. Finally, click on the little trash bin to remove the mask. In a few minutes, I'll show you how to do all of that, so let's keep moving. Let's say that you created a lot of these and you organize them into tags. You would click here to find your different tags. Finally, as you created your masks and before to organize them, you would have given them a particular name you would use the search bar to find the mask quicker. All right, it's about time to create a new mask. Click on the plus sign button. The first thing you will notice is that a new document opens. This is the template. You will also notice that the color selector is now blank. The next step is to create a shape that will define the boundaries of a mask. To do so, you can use a vector shape tool. I'll use the polyline tool. Before to create the shape and in the tool options docker, make sure that the polyline tool fill option is set to foreground color and the outline option is set to brush. Next, uh, decrease the size of your brush uh, to 5 pixels, uh, that will be a nice size. Now create your shape. When done, maybe add another shape on the side. Same thing here, make sure that the settings are set to foreground color and brush. To preview your mask, click on the eye looking button and here is a new mask. To save your new mask, rename the mask using the title input box. If you want, you can add a description in this box. 
When done, click Save. And here is the newly created mask. It appears in the section All and Tagged because I haven't assigned it to a new tag yet. So let's do that. Right click on the mask. Choose Assign to Tag. In this little input box, write your tag name. Click on the plus sign to create the tag. Now if I go here and look for my tag, it will appear at the bottom. If I click on my newly created tag, the mask is there. If I click on the All tag, the mask is there. But if I click on the Untagged tag, it won't be there. The reason why it's not there is because I tagged the mask, therefore it doesn't belong here anymore. Before to edit the mask, let's duplicate it. Click on the Duplicate button. The template reappears. Because we selected a mask to duplicate, it appears on the template. Looking at the title, you will see that the software added at the end the word copy in parentheses. There are many things that you can do. Using the moving tool, you can move the two shapes. Using the transform tool, you can resize the shapes. You can rotate them. You can flip them both ways and move them again. When done, click Apply. Normally, you should be able to see a preview of your changes. However, and maybe it is a bug, it is not working. As you can see, I click on it and nothing happens. Now let's save this new edited mask and we leave it as it is. And here it is. I am going to assign it to the tag I created earlier. We have now two sets of gamut masks inside the tag. To edit a mask, just click on it to select it and click on the Edit button. Since I created the vector shapes earlier, I can use the Select Shapes tool to resize the shapes. Just like earlier, I will also use the Move and Transform tools to make further changes. Time to save the changes. To remove a mask is quite simple. Click on the mask first to select it and click on the trash bin button. A message appears to make sure that you meant to delete this mask. Say yes. I am going to remove the other mask. To remove the tag, click on the tag to select it first. Then go to Tag and select Delete this tag. And the tag is gone. The last thing I want to show you is a comparison between a cartoon painted with a complementary colors versus the same cartoon painted with a random colors. As you can see, the first one is a more, uh, let's say, harmonious and uh, pleasing to the eye. And uh, the second one is, uh, I could say, loud and uh, unbalanced. So that said, uh, make sure to use uh, gamut masks for your designs and art uh, creations. They are especially great to help you create beautiful landscapes. Alright, we are finally done. I hope this tutorial was helpful. I will see you next time. Until then, have a wonderful week creating art. Thank you for watching. I'll see you later. Au revoir et à bientôt.